here. I'll start over again. Again, this. Uh, this thing is remarkably badass. <laughs> is that your Swiss thingy? One of them. How am I doing on aiming there? Okay. Let's come to the right just a little bit. Down a bit. Down more. More, more, more. Okay, that's pretty safe. We're rolling. You can make it hot whenever you want. Alrighty, it's ready to go. So let's have the first shots out of this BNT. And she worked. No surprise. So how do you tell when you're empty? You stop it there. Hi, Misha here, and this is part two in my initial impressions, history, and ultimately review of the BNT APC9K Pro, the special commemorative SCW Army Edition. In part one, I unboxed the kit for the first time, showed the various components that it comes with. Three mags, sling, and the Pelican fitted case. And gave a little bit of the initial background and how BNT came to be and how the APC-9 turned into the APC-9 Pro. In this part, we're going to talk about the very interesting SCW subcompact weapon program conducted by the U.S. Army, how that led into the U.S. Air Force, and probably more importantly, we're going to take this to the range and let a couple of people shoot it, compare it with some other guns, including the MP5, and see how I feel about this new acquisition after day two, the day at the range. And with no further ado, hey, let's just get into it. Now when you read about the B and T, the CSW program, it's often said that this was the first submachine gun adopted by the U.S. Army since the M3 grease gun. Well, that's true and not true. Because in the same press releases, it often says it replaced aging or worn out MP5s and MP5Ks. And of course, as we know, the government had several 9mm AR-15 types, both the short 7-incher here and the slightly longer 10, 10.5-incher. But these guns, along with things like the Swedish K, were essentially off-the-shelf acquisitions. They didn't go through trials. They didn't go through a formal adoption. They were just pieces of kit that were in the inventory for special forces to use. So it is and isn't true at the same time. It's also true that um, these guns in 9mm were kind of phased out of frontline use and even special forces use in the 1990s and early 21st century in favor of assault rifles, assault carbines. This is when the M4 was really coming into its own, and of course later the Mark 18. So, yeah, it makes sense. The problem, 223 may not always have the characteristics preferred for certain situations. And so it was felt that it was maybe time for a new submachine gun. So moving in to the 20 teens, you have what are known as high risk personnel, HRP, or as I like to think of them, harpies. And these are approved to have personal security details, PSDs. Essentially, these are high-ranking officers or government officials, or in some instances, foreign guests, usually traveling abroad in potentially hostile areas. And so their security personnel 
need to be packing, but something that can deploy in an urban environment, either, either say inside the streets, or in hotels, or in vehicles, close quarters, where accurate shots are very important. Also potentially suppressed, depending on certain environments. It's a different requirement than you would say need for an M4 carbine. That's much too large. Or even a Mark 18, which may not have the accuracy and may be too much flash and noise for, um, you know, for that roll. So what's wrong with these? You know, this is the DOE gun, the suitcase gun. Well, it is older technology. And wasn't suppressor ready. It actually went up against the MP5 cave for the uh, Department of Defense, or excuse me, Department of Energy. And the Army, as well as the Air Force, had some MP5Ks, but much like this one, they did not seem to have butt stocks. They weren't the MP5 PDW, they were really the MP5K. And of course, they would have had the foregrip, whereas our civilian one does not, but that gives you an idea. And they did have some standard MP5s with either the fixed A2 stock or the collapsing A3. And then the longer 8 and a quarter inch barrel. But again, this is not the smallest gun around. So, what they had was not exactly fitting the bill. And I think they didn't have a, a lot of them. What they had were getting old, maybe spare parts and armors weren't... Um, you know, available and so it was decided you know what it's just it's just time for uh for something new after all the army along with all the other branches to speak of had just recently adopted the m17 in 2017 so in 2018 they announced a potential prototype program where companies could submit designs and this would become the subcompact Wef weapons program the SCW program and in the beginning there wasn't really much specification aside from 9 millimeter modern submachine gun reasonably concealable suppressible that kind of thing what, what specifications there were were kind of laid out in April, and in May, prototype contracts were awarded. Companies would submit samples for testing, and it was vast. Believe it or not, Colt submitted a design known as the Modular 9mm Subcompact Weapon, and this would be the, only the first of many AR-based guns. CMMG, LMT, Lewis Machine and Tool, Quarter Circle 10. Many would cement AR type designs. You would also have quite a few MP5 based designs. Believe it or not, Zenith, representing Mekek, MKE out of Turkey, submitted three different variants of the Z5. The Z5RS, which was a full size. The Z5K, which this is here, and the Z5PDW, or Z5P, which is very similar, but based on the MP5 PDW. And, PTR would submit a select fire version of its 9C as the 9CS, again based on the MP5. We would also have a couple of submissions from CZ USA. I brought out my EVO 3. They would submit the standard Scorpion EVO 3A1 with its nearly 8-inch barrel. And this stock is QD, so that was kind of part of it, otherwise folding. And they would submit the subcompact version as the uh, Scorpion K or Mini Micro. And if that's not enough, you would also have Beretta submitting a version of the PMX, their modern subgun and you would have Sig Sauer submitting a couple of versions of the MPX that they did 
full size NMPXK, which was kind of the the genesis of the Copperhead. And if that's still not enough, Breger and Thomat was well represented. Trident Rifles would submit a version of BNT AG Switzerland's MP9, which is again the select fire version of the TP9, and BNT USA would submit the very new at the time to the market APC 9K Pro, which we have here, of course. Interestingly, BNT Switzerland did not directly uh, put in its bid, but we had its U.S. sister company and Trident, which operates out of Switzerland a lot, both kind of competing against each other with different designs. And it's kind of a overall unique situation. But if that sounds like a, a lot of companies competing, actually on June 16, 2018, there would even be more added to the list. Cool. Nine Let's add some more 9mm to the mix from AR-15 basis. Why not? We have Nusk and we had Anstrad that were added. And we have HK getting in the game. Presumably HK USA, but I could be wrong. Could be HK GmbH. Now believe it or not, HK did not submit an MP5 variant. They actually submitted the UMP9, which HK has been pushing pretty hard since the late 90s to replace the mp5 and to me the ump kind of reminds me of the scorpion in a lot of ways so yeah we've got over a dozen companies we've got several entries from multiple companies colt put in a couple uh, hobo the cat is rubbing my leg hello hobo and, of course, Zenith put in three, and yeah, there's just all kinds of stuff going on. Yada, 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 the specifications are very loose. No one really knows much of anything except 9mm submachine guns. So, hell, let's just throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. It became a cluster. So, on July 2nd, 2018, the SCW program was essentially suspended, halted, and all previously awarded contracts were canceled can't blame them so after taking time to catch their breath and have a fourth of july uh, celebration at the army on july 26th the director at picatinny arsenal announced kind of the resumption of the scw program but this time things would be different first off each Manufacturer would have to submit 15 sample guns for testing, as well as three suppressors, spare magazines, spare parts, and any other kind of support gear they might need, slings, holsters, what have you. They also gave more detailed specifications. You would need to fire 9mm, but not just any old 9. You would need to be able to fire accurately. 147 grain subsonic as well as 124 grain standard NATO. They had some pretty stringent accuracy requirements and it could not weigh any more than seven pounds, which is, you know, pretty loose. But they also did not want to barrel anything over five and a half inches and an overall length no greater than 15 inches. And interestingly, they also said no folding stocks. We would need a collapsing stock only. I think this has to do with speed of deployment. They would go on to say it would need fully ambidextrous controls. And it would need to be able, essentially, to... Mount various optics, modern devices, what have you. 
and then finally it would need to have a kind of a non-reflective black finish that's right they weren't going FDE this time. No, they wanted black because this was meant to be carried under clothes or in kind of a co covert uh, thing. Not, not um, you know, kind of out in the environment. So, yeah. So these new requirements knocked out a lot of companies. Uh, of course, the Scorpion with its folding stock would be out. This rule that Beretta Colt decided to kind of bow out. Other AR makers didn't, though. Uh, MP5s were kind of quickly ruled out. Someone kind of realized, hey, wait a second, Zenith guns are made in Turkey. Probably, politically, wouldn't be great for the U.S. Army's new submachine gun to be made in Turkey. At least not as of 2018, 2019. Politically, yeah, not the best thing in the world. It also kind of put a damper on the other... BNT, the MP9, because it had a folding stock. Of course, you know, adjustments can be made, but companies, they're trying to do this as cheap as possible for more profit. So if they can keep it off the shelf, more is the better. Well, between September 14th and September 17th, six companies were awarded contracts. These would include, of course, BNT USA, with its design, Trident Rifles would continue on, which makes me kind of wonder if they switched over to a variant of the APC or if they modified the MP9. I'm not sure. You also had uh, Amstrabd. I always mess that up because of the computer. Sorry. And then you had Global Ordnance, which I'm not even sure what they did aside from an AR variant. They were new. Another new one was Shield, LLC. And you had kind of what everyone figured would be the winner, Sig Sauer's MPXK. Again, kind of based on the Copperhead. So these are the six companies that um, kind of got the down select, if you will. And they were to deliver their 15 prototypes. And the U.S. Army said that they would pick a winner around six months later. At this time, Six Hour in the USA up in New Hampshire, they're riding high. They had won the M17 contract. They had the M18. Their MPX was taking off. They had some success with the MCX. They had some ammo contracts. Most people thought that um, they had it in the bag. Now, I don't own an MCX Copperhead, but I have covered it in the past. So, uh, let's toss out some shooting clips so that you can just kind of be reminded what it looks like. MPX Copperhead. Hold open. In late... March of 2019, a couple of government websites had shown contract had been awarded, things were getting gone. Uh, people were pretty clear they had kind of picked a winner, and most people thought it would be the SIG. And it almost seemed like a joke on April 1st when it was announced that BNT USA was awarded a contract for nearly $2.6 million to deliver. An initial order of 350 of these with a potential maximum of 1,000 at the contracted price plus suppressors gear what have you yeah it kind of seemed unusual and this is really what brought BNT to the mainstream in the USA and it's an interesting choice it really was Many have to kind of wonder why. But it doesn't, I suppose, really matter. They were, were awarded the contract. And their first delivery, it was a pretty small one, around 10, 10 more guns. Remember, the military already has 15 testers. They deliver the first true full production batch in June of uh, 2019. 
And from there, deliveries have commenced over the past nearly two years at this point because we're in June of 2021. I don't know if the Army is exercising its uh, right to purchase more at this time. Probably if the need for personal protection, personal security arises. One interesting thing, they did purchase the version that takes the Berger and Thomat mags. Here's the 20 rounder. I think earlier I might have called it a 15, but it's a 20. Clear, polymer, double stack, double feed. And it's interesting because here's our Sig mag. It's also 20 rounds. Part of the APC 9K Pro package is they did offer, and still do, uh, 320 magwell lower as well as glock mags both of which the military has an inventory so while they went with the proprietary mags no one's sure maybe they proved more reliable or lighter weight maybe they liked that they were clear also keep in mind this is not a general issue weapon this is a very specialized weapon so to the military what does it matter if they need to buy three, four, five, six, even ten extra mags if you're only going to have 350 to 1,000 guns. So, yeah. suppose it really doesn't matter. But it is an interesting fact. So, Six Hour didn't win at all. And this is not a huge contract, the SCW. But again, it's a, it's a big feather in both B&T Switzerland, AG, and BNT USA LLC's cap. That is for sure. But it wouldn't actually end there. Around the same time the first production SCWs were being delivered to the Army, the Air Force decided it too needed to replace its older MP5s, namely its MP5Ks, because it too had PSD type protectors out there for its high-risk personnel too and they too are were uh, wearing out and its requirements were very very similar to the army's except it also had the added concern of um operating in and around airplanes and helicopters which meant having something that didn't uh, necessarily over penetrate due to inaccuracy kind of basically not a bullet holes hose not a spray and pray pinpoint accuracy. So they too decided they needed the same sauce. And they looked at the results from the Army's trials. They did some trying out on their own. Although it was more low-key, it was a much smaller budget program. They ended up spending about 200000 And they too announced on November 17 of 2020, so about six months ago now, that they would be selecting the APC 9K Pro is its next protection weapon. Again, replacing older MP5Ks like this one. Except with the foregrip and select fire. But the Air Force's initial order was much smaller. 65 units. Although they too obtained the option for up to 1,000 at the agreed upon price. So, yeah, this is uh, in Army service now, but it's only starting to go into Air Force service. So now two branches. The APC has also been adopted by about eight other nations by various capacities, as well as a handful of police departments in the USA, and namely down in Florida, because, well, Florida, you can understand why they might need it. And with that... We kind of cycle back around to the uh, long-winded named model here. The BNT SCW Special Duper Uber Army Collector's Commemorative Memorial Edition APCD FG Edition was announced on the uh, May 15 of 2020 and kind of became famous in December of that year. 
And yeah, they said they were going to build 350 to commemorate the initial army order, selling 333 to the public and keeping 17 for internal use, one would suppose. So feature-wise, put the long 30 round mag back in it. We are uh, kind of exactly what you'd expect, except for select fire. This barrel is just under five, uh, four and a half inches with the attachment removed, this one here, and just under five and a half with it installed. Overall weight is just under six pounds, and overall length with the stock or brace, depending on it's like fire civilian, is just over 13 and a half inches. Obviously, it has a non-reflective finish. Pretty standard stuff. Now, originally, the APC9K Pro had a folding stock, much like the earlier version. But, for various reasons, including to meet the contract, a collapsible stock, around four positions, I believe, was added to the military version. So, when we have the tail hook arm brace with the uh, adapter installed it is very appropriate in fact about the only thing we're missing is the foregrip for the front here there's a little stubby jobber it might look something like this I am absolutely being serious. I've had this one for probably 10 years. This is from BNT. I did not pick it up for this gun. I have not put it on the gun. But it gives you an idea of what a BNT foregrip would look like. In fact, the Swiss military uses this style. It's a good little grip. Even has a small storage compartment inside. And it makes a lot of sense for a PDW. Also, even having a detachable foregrip in case it might get in the way. So I thought I would just show you that. But again, it's not on the gun. And I have had this a very long time. I'm not even kidding. Alright. So here's the other side. You can see it is SCW marked. And of course, it has ambidextrous controls. M-lock. Very nice trigger on this. It does come with the aim point and the sights, like we saw at the beginning. So, we've talked about the kit, the history. What about how it shoots? Since I was taking this out for the very first time, I brought out my Z5K, because it does kind of match it and was what it was replacing. And because I knew this gun would run. So if we happen to have feeding issues with this gun, I could use this as a as a backup, as a secondary type gun. So with that, let's cut in the shooting footage from last time with both of these. And then just kind of talk about initial impressions of how the BNT shot. This is the very first time I've ever shot an APC-9. Although again in the past, I have fired the TP9 actually quite a bit. So let's get to it. Ready? And we are rolling. Alrighty, let's try the full 30 round mag in the SCW. <laughs> Definitely stop shooting. Nope. Pretty short throw. We're gonna let J-Row try the SCW. Really 
really soft shooting. Yeah, it is. It's it's actually not even all that loud. I mean, like my ear pro wasn't quite all the way in. And that was actually totally comfortable. Now I am rolling. Fire the MP5K, the Zenith Z5K, really. Okay. Now we'll let Jero try the MP5K, the Zenith. I'm so gonna. Get Yeah, I liked I liked it a lot better with the uh, extendable stock. <laughs> Arm brace. Yeah, well. Arm brace. Whatever. <laughs> it was actually really good to have J. Rowe as a guest at the range because he was around for the old special weapons and Bobcat MP5s. He remembers how wonderfully unreliable and interesting they were, and I don't think he'd ever fired a Zenith before. So we will say this was 100% reliable. Again, this is a pretty tested gun that I've had for years now. So that's to its credit. And of course, neither of us had ever fired an APC-9. In fact, he had never seen one to that day. So kind of coming in blind, no pun intended. No question, the APC-9 shot better and was more enjoyable to shoot. Now, in the MP5's credit, it didn't have its foregrip. But, if we're comparing apples to apples, in the military, it didn't have a stock either. Whereas the APC-9 doesn't have its foregrip, but it does have its arm brace. So it's not quite fair, but, you know, it is what it is. I will say that the MP5K is about four and a half pounds compared to the nearly six pounds of the APC-9. So this is heavier, but that honestly kind of gives it a more solid feeling. Furthermore, if you upgrade this to the MP5K PDW, again with the foregrip folding shoulder stock, or collapsing stock in some instances, and slightly longer barrel, this ends up being five and a half pounds or more, so about the same. The barrel on this is about four and a half inches, and if you unscrew the three lug, this is about four and a half. With the three lug, that's about five and a half, and the PDW version is a little bit more than five and a half. The APC here, like I said, is a little over 13 and a half inches with the brace and or stock collapsed in. The MP5K with no stock is just under 13 inches, so a little bit shorter. But if you put a stock on, depending on which one you go with, that jumps up around 14 to 14 and a half inches. So it's a little bit longer. Weight-wise is about the same. But let's just, you know, be honest. This is technology. The MP5K itself was adopted first in 1976. We have HK's wonderful trigger system, which is never the greatest. Selector is single-sided, although you can get the ambi ones. No last round hold open. And the roller delay system works very well for reducing recoil, but does make it a little bit more maintenance intensive than certain straight blowback guns. And while the APC-9 is a straight blowback, it has this neat little hydraulic buffer in the back which works really well. If you're shooting lower powered ammo, say 115 grain, meh, the buffer's not really used all that much. But if you shoot real hot stuff, say 9 mil plus P, the bolt comes back at a pretty good velocity, but then hits that buffer and slows down, meaning you don't having it knock against the back of the receiver. So yeah, I can definitely say while the MP5 is still a lot nicer to shoot than many other 9mm, it got owned pretty hard by the uh, APC-9, at least mine here, 
Not to mention this has a nicer trigger and it has a nicer non-reciprocating charging handle than this non-reciprocating charging handle. Again, I know it's a little fair not having an arm brace on this one, but even if it did, yeah. And of course, MP5 mags, kind of old technology again. These are more modern style mags. Yeah, I, I kind of see why this was thought to be a good replacement from an R, for an already very good submachine gun. For the past six years, I would actually say CZ's Scorpion Evo 3 S1 has been one of my favorite modern 9mm guns. All polymer shell, it came with iron sights, good length barrel, nice stock. It's kind of a shame that it got knocked out, but I also get it. But it is one of the few truly modern submachine guns. And I do have some range footage from a while back of us shooting this, and I have fired this one a good bit over the last many years. So let's toss that up and then talk about how it kind of compares to the B&T. Evo 3. The Scorpion 2 is really reliable and a lot of fun, but it's a true direct blowback with no buffer in the back. And to put these side by side, you can really feel the difference that buffer makes because here the bolt comes back on the spring and because the bolt is so massive, it does kind of teeter-totter in your hand a bit, which is also something the UMP will do. It's not unpleasant, at least to me, but it is noticeable whereas this really eliminates a lot of that kind of oscillation which i would imagine in full auto the apc9 would group tighter which is one of the big things they were going for with the scw i also want to talk about the stocks it might kind of seem odd that they didn't want a folding stock but if you think about it a folding stock like this adds bulk to the side and when you deploy it, and this is one of the faster ones, you swing it out, meaning you have space on the side. In a tight environment, say an airplane or a vehicle, or even maybe in a hallway, you may not have that side space. So having a retracting stock like this that you can just pull out single-handed doesn't require it quicker to deploy it also well of course it adds some girth to the sides because of the rails it kind of flushes up and it adds it equaling on both sides so it actually is quite logical and kind of explains a lot of things plus a lot of military personnel are accustomed to the m4 with its adjustable sliding stock so this kind of replicates a, a somewhat similar motion it's also said that the uh, BNT suppresses really well, that it doesn't kind of have a tendency to blow gas in your face. I haven't suppressed this one yet. They both have very modern controls, non-reciprocating charging handle. This is fully ambidextrous. This is mostly fully ambidextrous. Both have modular pistol grips. Again, this is just a little heavier feeling. It's a very beefy feeling gun, but not in a bad way. I also really like this uh, caulking handle. It's a very intuitive gun to use, which is great if you have raw recruits. And we had just such a person when we were out shooting, a woman who had really never fired a gun before, and even that day had only fired an AR-15 and a pistol. So this was about the third gun she'd ever fired in her life. And it actually went pretty well. Here you go. That's kind of fine. You didn't want to load a full mag, so that's what you got. No, I did not want to load a full mag. <laughs> <laughs> Here. I'll take a picture of you with it. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense why they chose this. Cost, I'm sure, had something to do with it because, well, government being government. But it is interesting that it's a foreign design. 
At the beginning of the video, I told you I was a little let down by the kit, and I think I've explained throughout how I became more and more excited with it. And the capper was being able to put a few mags through it over the past uh, weekend. So after shooting it, I'm kind of a fan. That doesn't mean I'm going to sell my other 9mm, far from it. But uh, I'm glad I picked one up on trade here. And I know a lot of people that buy these SCW Special Limited whatever editions probably won't even shoot them. But I say nuts to that. This thing's going to get shot. Why not? And I'm sure one day we'll even run it suppressed. So all in all, my conclusion after all this is good job. I like the gun. I think the history behind the SCW program is quite interesting. The ergonomics are very nice. The trigger is nice on this guy. The control layout is, is quite well done. Do it here, guys. Got your release here. It's a little stiff on an empty mag, but not too bad. And, uh, yeah, it's safety on. Very nice trigger. Some people have complained about this ambi safety hitting their hand. None of us noticed it out there at all. And you hear the same complaints with other guns like the Scorpion. I think it may be a little more valid on the Scorpion. But this just, it really doesn't hang down far at all, guys. Unless you're choking the chicken on it. I don't really think it's going to be a problem my opinion but a very neat gun and actually very uh, very user friendly for what it is I don't think it's even one you necessarily need to uh, SBR I think you could just kind of make do with your arm brace here again it's very easy to manipulate most everything with this one handed too it has enough weight to give it a solid robust feeling but it's not so heavy you can't easily pick it up maneuver it around single hand not even close certainly with the bracer stock it's something you can easily manage one handed uh, the magazines again they're the Burger and Thilmat mag I've heard some people complain that theirs might split down the back there is a seam there Happily, the mags have gotten a little cheaper. Back when I bought my TP9, they were 60, 70 bucks and hard to find. Now, ones with the bumper like this are about 40 bucks, pretty easy to find. Ones without the bumper, about 35 bucks. You can get 15 rounders, 20 rounders. I think there might be a 25, and there's definitely, of course, a 30 here. So mags are a little easier to get, and of course, you can always get a uh, Glock or SIG lower because the lower just pops off with two captive pins. Pretty standard style there. Heck, they even make a binary trigger for this. But I think it fires fast enough to burn through ammo for my taste already. But this is one I think people have asked us to do and uh, wanted to give a good thorough review. But this is just an initial review. I'm sure this gun will pop up in future videos with comparisons and and different whatnots. So, if you own an APC-9, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Or if you have one of these SCW packages, do you think it's worth it? Again, I took this one in on trade, so I didn't pay, I guess, new price for them. I'm not even sure what new price is. But, uh, B&Ts are not cheap, but they're Swiss. Not much Swiss is ever cheap. Appreciate you hanging out with me for this time. As always, if you could, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to the Patreon page. With that, this is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.